Stress and isolation over the past 19 months has led to a spike in addiction during the pandemic. The United Way of the Adirondack Region says more people have been in need of treatment and services in recent months. Many families, especially those with younger children, have also needed help staying in their homes and putting food on the table during the pandemic. As the United Way kicks off its yearly fundraising campaign, CEO John Bernardi says there's no monetary goal this year, but rather a goal to help its network of nonprofits assist thousands of people, especially families, who were already struggling to get by even before the pandemic. Our goal this year is to mobilize the resources necessary to provide services to 80,000 people across Clinton, Essex, and Franklin counties. Through our network of partner agencies, 40 to be exact, throughout the region. Everyone at one time has needed a hand up, everyone. And this agency provides that hand up. And we're joined now by John Bernardi, CEO of the United Way of the Adirondack Region. Welcome, it's good to see you as always. Thanks, Tom, it's always a pleasure to be here. I think a lot of people might be surprised by that number, 80,000 that we just heard you mention. That's half the population of the tri-counties, Clinton, Essex, Franklin counties. That's how many people you think the United Way will be helping in the coming year. Yes, Tom, and we were able to do that because we have an extensive network of partner agencies across the region. It's not surprising that uh, everybody needs help from time to time. And our network, because it's so comprehensive and so extensive, we are able to provide services to half the population in our region. And that's something we're very proud of. You are anticipating the needs will be greater this year because of the pandemic? Well, certainly the, the pandemic has created a great deal of stress for people as you're well aware. And everybody's story is a little bit different. Um, it, it's affected people in unique ways, in some ways worse than others, but everyone has been impacted in some way. And some of the impacts are very visible and some of them aren't. Uh, mental health and wellness, for example, is, is maybe a little less visible, mm -hmm. but is very real and has um, really uh, been impacted by the pandemic. And that isolation and the changes that we've had and that we've seen um, have had an impact on people. Um, and there's, there's less contact, there's less activity, there's less opportunity. And um, again, mental health and wellness is just one example of numerous others that um, have increased as a result of the pandemic. And you mentioned some of those numerous other ones. When it first started, there were some pretty obvious ones. Food insecurity. We saw families that perhaps lost their paycheck, lost their income, had to stay home with the kids so they yeah. couldn't go work. Child care and transportation issues that we, that we uh, saw early on. Also housing. You mentioned the other day at, at the campaign kickoff that really housing turned out to be more of a pressing issue for a lot of families than, than maybe first thought. Absolutely, the, the availability of housing and the affordability of housing have become an increasingly urgent need for people. Um, there, there's not enough affordable housing for Alice families and other moderate income families. It's become um, a significant problem for people in our region. It's always been a problem and it's been increased and exacerbated by the COVID-19 pandemic. You mentioned Alice, families that are asset limited, income constrained, employed, they're working, but they're struggling to get by, they're living almost paycheck to paycheck. And so for them, about uh, almost 40, 50% of families in the North Country fell into that category even before the pandemic. So now with the pandemic, are we seeing even a larger number of, of families that are are having in one way or another uh, a tough time or a tough go of it. We are, we're not only seeing a larger number of families, but we're seeing the these same families in some cases dealing with new challenges that they may not have faced in the past. Again, housing being one of those um, challenges. Transportation is another huge challenge in our 
region. There's so many Alice families in our region that are struggling to either obtain a vehicle or in many cases keep that vehicle on the road. And what we're seeing, for example, is um, many really good manufacturing jobs in our region and they're paying a pretty generous wage. Um, they could range anywhere from 17 to $30 an hour. Mm -hmm. um, these, are, these are good jobs. They can't fill these jobs. Um, transportation is one of the major reasons for that. Child care is, is another. And you mentioned transportation and child care. Those costs, uh, especially for Alice families, can be difficult. You have a new program that you're working on that looks to help families with financing so that they can afford to get a car. Yes, through our Alice Steering Committee, there'll be a pilot in, launching in November, uh, is a microfinancing program. This is a partnership through United Way of the Adirondack Region, Community Connections of Franklin County, mm -hmm. Adirondack Federal Credit Union in Tupper Lake, ETS Employment Agency has been a big part of this as well, and other partners. Um, and we have come together to pilot this microfinancing program. This will allow Alice families, primarily for vehicle purchase, at least the pilot will be primarily for vehicle purchase. They'll be able to borrow a fairly modest amount of money, um, typically between five and $10,000, um, to purchase a vehicle. And most of the families that will go through this program would be ineligible for a traditional loan for a variety of reasons. And we're able to adjust their payment uh, plan and, and the structure of that so it fits into their budget. Um, and um, it's a great program. We're really excited about it. It's, it's the first in the region, and we think it will ultimately help a lot of families uh, be able to cope with those challenges of living in poverty or being uh, on the edge of the financial cliff. This will help them get a used car, probably, a loan for a used car, Correct. whereas, as you mentioned before, they may not have qualified through a bank to be able to get that loan. So That's they, correct. they can get a used car that they can use to get to work, yes. get kids to childcare. And, and for many families, that will make a world of difference. A world of difference. You work with a team of 40 other nonprofits that uh, help provide the services. In almost every case, the funds that we raise and then are allocated and utilized throughout our network almost exclusively um, go toward meeting needs that could not be met through other funds or resources. And that's really important because there are these gaps and there are these needs that fall through the cracks without private dollars and without private empathy and compassion and generosity. So you and your agencies truly provide that safety net uh, for, for many families. Correct. And, w and we, we also hear from government agencies, social services and other government agencies that are doing everything they can, but there are limitations often to what they can do to help a family in need. They'll reach out to us and through um, either our organization or one of our partners, we can almost always put together some type of a collaboration that will meet the need. Are financial donations the absolute best route to go for those of us who want to give money every year? That's what helps you the most. Definitely. Um, financial donations are what's needed the most. You can learn more about helping out the United Way, including volunteer opportunities, by visiting the United Way's website.